Movie begins by telling how the Earth is getting hotter day by day due to human activities. So that there are only a matter of days until the Earth where humans live is destroyed and eliminates humanity. However, scientists are trying to prevent that from happening by trying to cool the Earth with their technology. But instead of succeeding, it actually made the Earth frozen to its core. There was a man named Mr. Wilford who had predicted it would happen. And by the time that happened, he had already finished creating a very great sanctuary. A giant train arc named Snowpiercer which is 1001 carriages long. But Snowpiercer is only for the rich, while ordinary people will not be able to buy the Snowpiercer ticket. So all they could do, was try to attack, and force a ride on the very rear of the carriages. Bloodshed was inevitable because Mr. Wilford's guards ruthlessly killed the ticketless people. But as Snowpiercer was about to leave, the commander ordered his soldiers to leave the rear of the carriage and lock the door. So that the common people who managed to get on, were trapped in the Snowpiercer carriage which was at the back or commonly called the tail. At that time, the Earth's temperature was minus 40 degrees Celsius and maybe you will be wondering, what is the difference between the Snowpiercer train and other trains in general? And how can Snowpiercer make humans safe from the catastrophic climate change on Earth? Snowpiercer specially designed by Mr. Wilford produces a normal temperature inside the train, so it is protected from the cold weather outside. Snowpiercer has a very long rail that goes around the Earth, and Snowpiercer keeps rotating never stopping. Snowpiercer has eternal electrical energy and I still don't know how they got that infinite electrical energy. I thought maybe they got the electrical energy through the never-ending rotation of the Snowpiercer train. Long story short, seven years have passed and the Snowpiercer train is still moving safely. Earth's temperature is currently minus 120 degrees Celsius. Then, scene will focus on the back of the carriage called the tail, where the common people still live there. Dark, stuffy and dirty but still better than having to be outside where the temperature is extremely cold, to the point where it can freeze everything. To eat, every day they are only given food in the form of black hard jelly which tastes bad. He is late in the main character in this movie. The characters are witty, clever, and strong, yet quite emotional. At this time Layton and his friends are planning a rebellion. They had had enough of Mr. Wilford and were intent on taking over Snowpiercer. Their Layton disagreed, because he felt that they should prepare a plan more carefully. They do not know the strength of the enemy they will face. Four years ago they had rebelled and what happened was many of them died, then thirteen of their hands were cut off as punishment. But Pike and the others could wait no longer. The food rations given to them continued to decrease day by day. And also the women in the back carriage were all sterilized, so they couldn't have children. It's only a matter of time until they are all old, sickly and then die. There is no justice for the residents of the tail carriage, so that is where Layton has no other choice but to follow the plan of Pike and his friends. In the tail carriage, Layton lives with a woman named Josie, and Josie has an adopted son named Miles. Miles is a very genius child. Miles' real mother died because she was killed by the guards, and now Josie takes care of him. And Layton used to be with his wife named Zara, but Zara was taken to the front carriage. The occasional front carriage would pick up those in the tail carriage if needed. Long story short, the plan of Layton and friends will be carried out soon. They were already prepared with their homemade sharp weapons. But when the guard came they're carrying a cart of food, unexpectedly one of the members of the banquet also came with more guards. Her name is Ruth, so Layton and Pike are forced to postpone their plan of rebellion. But unexpectedly, Ruth's arrival turned out to be reading the letter of invitation to Layton. Layton was taken by the guards by force. His friends couldn't do anything when Layton was brought by force. Before that, Layton had to undergo some kind of hygiene protocol and examination and then also be given a change of clothes. After that Layton was taken to the front carriage. Uniquely they do not walk. You can imagine if 1001 carriages away if you have to walk. Inside the Snowpiercer, it turns out that there is a transport under the carriage. While waiting for Layton to arrive, I would like to explain something first about the life system in Snowpiercer. The occupants of the carriage were divided into four groups. The first group is class 1 which contains billionaires, officials and the top class. Mr. Wilford was able to build this very advanced Snowpiercer train too because it was funded by them. Then the second group is class 2. I don't know much about this class 2, because this season it hasn't been explained much. Next is class 3. Here class 3 looks like society in general but maybe in a past life they were rich enough to buy Snowpiercer tickets. Then the fourth class is of course the tail carriages. There are two security organizations in Snowpiercer. First, there is a large number of guard troops, led by a commander named Noland. 
And then secondly there was an army of brake officers, led by a man named Roche. They weren't as numerous as the guard troops, but the duties of the brake officers seemed to be more substantial. For example, at this time two brake officers named Bastille and Osweiler were taking Leighton to meet their leader, Roche. When entering a room, Leighton seemed to feel dazzled by the sunlight. After seven years he was cooped up in a dark and cramped tail carriage, finally Leighton could see again the sunlight and the situation out there which was all filled with ice. After arriving, there Leighton was again stunned when he was given a piece of sandwich and a bowl of gravy. The man immediately ate his food very deverably. It really felt like a dream he could taste good food again. There Roche said the reason and purpose of Leighton being brought. A third-class man named Seenwise has been killed with both his legs and arms mutilated and his genitals cut off. Roche knows that Leighton used to be a homicide detective, so he conveys Mr. Wilford's request that Leighton help catch the killer. Bestel and Osweiler then take Leighton to where Seenwise's body was found. After thinking a bit, then Leighton said that he didn't want to help solve the murder problem, and asked to be returned to the tail carriage. As a result, Bestel and Osweiler took Leighton to a room, then beat the man there. But Roche suddenly comes to stop them. He is with a mysterious woman. Roche berates Bestel and Osweiler for acting without orders from him. Now there were only three of them in the room. The mystery woman introduces herself Melanie Cavill. She was one of the members of the banquet like Ruth, but in a higher position. Melanie is also Mr. Wilford's right-hand man. During the seven years Snowpiercer drove, the mysterious man could never be met by anyone. Only Melanie was able to meet Mr. Wilford in person. Melanie told that two years ago a murder incident like this had occurred. Both hands and both legs of the victim were cut off and the genitals were also cut off. The victims are also men. First Melanie managed to catch and imprison the perpetrator in the eternal drawer. But now a similar murder is happening again. Leighton deduces that there may be an impersonator or that Melanie has caught the wrong person. A little information about the eternal drawer. There are hundreds of these drawers at Snowpiercer and are taken care of by a doctor named Hendry. Where if someone is stored in the eternal drawer, then that person will be put to sleep. More or less like hibernation. And it was a severe punishment, because someone who was put in would only be asleep for the rest of his life. Nikki Jennett is the alleged perpetrator of the murder two years ago who was convicted. If there is a possibility that Nikki is innocent, Melanie asks Leighton to help the girl escape her sentence by catching the real killer. Leighton was then brought back by Roche. Roche will bring Leighton together with the victim's wife. Leighton was taken to a class 3 carriage. The scenery there wasn't that great, but it wasn't as bad as in the tail carriage either. Then Leighton met Seenwise's wife who was none other than Zara, Leighton's wife. Five years after Zara left the back carriage, Leighton finally reunited with his wife. But of course Leighton was now furious with Zara, who had heartlessly left him in the tail car and then remarried to another man. Zara was furious at Leighton again. Back when the earth started to freeze, she just wanted to die with their family, but Leighton insisted on bringing Zara to Snowpiercer until she had to end up suffering in the tail carriage. Better to just die than there, said Zara. She had absolutely no regrets about leaving Leighton in the tail carriage. She was also the one who reported about Leighton who was a former homicide detective, so Leighton could prove Zara's innocence. Because currently Zara is the main suspect in the murder of Seenwise. After that, Roche returned to bring Leighton. This time to an agricultural carriage where there are many fruit trees in abundance. There are over 130 such agricultural wagons. Shortly, Melanie came and met Leighton again to ask if Leighton was willing to solve this murder case. Because actually this problem is very fatal and can cause order in Snowpiercer to be disrupted. And also there isn't a single homicide detective in Snowpiercer except for Leighton alone. Melanie offers to make Leighton a third-class person. Finally Leighton agrees on the condition that the people in the tail carriage must also be moved to third class. But of course Melanie refuses, because that would upset Snowpiercer's balance. Everyone in grades 3, 2, and 1 would definitely be against it. Since he still didn't get the chance, Leighton was to be held temporarily in confinement and Roche took him right away. The scene then moves to the tail carriage, where Pike, Josie and everyone there are shocked when they see the old Ivan whom they consider their father, has died by hanging himself. This sparked the anger of the people there. They lost Leighton, then now they lost Ivan. There was no other way, they had to revolt right away. Pike really is already on fire. The plan begins. First they reported about Ivan's death to the guards. Of course according to security protocols, human corpses must be removed and disposed of. Some guards opened the door. 
Two brake officers, Bestel and Osweiler were also present to transport Ivan's body. But when Bestel and Osweiler were going to check Ivan's body, there was an act of rebellion. There, Pike, Josie and the others attempt to incapacitate and kill the guards. Osweiler luckily managed to escape. One by one they killed the guards. One of the strong men took out several sentinels at once alone. In the midst of a battle that caused bloodshed from both sides, a little girl named Winnie bravely brought the guard's severed hand and opened the train door. But unexpectedly, Commander Noland along with many more guards came there. Shortly thereafter, Leighton was also brought there. At this time Pike and his friends managed to seize a carriage and also managed to take Bastille hostage. Commander Noland ordered Leighton to stop his friend's actions. Because if he doesn't, Noland will step in to kill them all. Leighton then walked into the carriage, where there were many corpses lying around. The corpses of the fallen guards as well as the corpses of the fallen tail carriage people. Blood splattered everywhere. Leighton meets Pike and his friends who are holding Bestel hostage. There, Leighton tried to persuade his three friends to stop the rebellion and surrender, because otherwise Commander Noland would kill them all. Pike doesn't want to listen at first, but after Leighton promises that he has a plan to take over Snowpiercer, Pike and the others agree. But before that, Leighton punched Bestel hard to avenge her actions earlier. After that, Leighton went straight to Commander Noland and also Melanie. He requested that his three friends not be put to death and just put to sleep in the eternal drawer. Leighton promises to solve the scene-wise murder case if his request is granted. Fortunately, Melanie agrees. Moments later, Melanie is seen returning to the engine room where Mr. Wilford's residence is. Where not just anyone can enter there, only engineers can including Melanie. There Melanie took off her formal clothes and now she was only wearing a hoodie like she was relaxing at home. The woman then encountered a man driving the snowpiercer. At first I thought it was Mr. Wilford, but it wasn't. The man was called Bennett who was one of the engineers. Surprisingly, because apparently Mr. Wilford wasn't there, Melanie was the one who had been leading and driving the snowpiercer. Assisted by two engineers, Bennett and Javier. The scene then shows how Leighton's three colleagues are put into the eternal drawer. While in the tail carriage, Ruth arrives with some guards, pronouncing punishment on a young child named Winnie who has helped the rebellion. However her mother tries to stop that and sacrifices herself to replace her daughter. The punishment really hurts. How could it not be? The right hand that was to be taken after being secured and splashed with water, the mother's hand was stretched out of the carriage. And within seconds, the mother's hand was instantly frozen. The mother appeared to be in so much pain that she passed out. Then one officer using a large hammer hit the mother's hand until it shattered. Little Winnie could only cry hugging her older brother. The scene then focuses on Melanie and the engineers who feel a slight jolt when a small avalanche hits Snowpiercer's carriage. The path they were walking at this time became more and more difficult every year. Javier suggests they slow down Snowpiercer so as not to trigger another avalanche. But Melanie says they better keep up the speed so Snowpiercer can still get enough electrical energy. Melanie then came downstairs. As usual, she greeted the residents of Class 1 who were having breakfast. As hosts, she and Ruth certainly provided the best service for the rich people. There is one most influential family in Class 1. They are the Folger family, with his wife, Lilla, and their daughter, LJ, and their personal bodyguard, Eric. Lilla protested a bit when she heard that a resident of the tail carriage was assigned to investigate a Class 3 murder case. Lilla thought that was unethical, but Melanie assures that Mr. Wilford will not choose the wrong person. Leighton is the right person. In the tail carriages, some of them will be taken to be assigned to work in the sanitation. Their job is to clean up all the dirt belonging to Class 1, 2, and 3. At that time Leighton will return to carry out an investigation together with the Bestel officers. When he saw John and the others brought in for duty, Leighton seemed to have had an idea. Long story short, Leighton and Bestel returned to visit the Class 3 carriage. During the investigation, Bestel would continue to supervise Leighton and help Leighton. They then meet Jack, a man who works as a maintainer of that tunnel. It was he who found Scenewise's body. At that time, Jack was eating and it seemed like Leighton couldn't get any useful information out of the man. After finishing interviewing Jack, Bestel then asked Leighton to meet someone. She is a woman named Audrey. You could say Audrey is the leader of the third class who is quite influential. From Audrey, Leighton got information about how Nikki could become a suspect and be punished. The woman then took Leighton to a special place in class 3. The place where Zara worked. That special place is a place of meditation. There, Audrey left Leighton with Zara, 
Apparently, it was there that Zara provided useful information for Leighton. Seen Wise is not an ordinary third-class person. Zara thinks it's possible that Sean Wise is Wilford's accomplice for grade 3. So you could say Sean Wise was Mr. Wilford's informant. In the tail carriage, the mother whose hands were cut off by the guards, her condition was getting more and more worrying. The mother looked in great pain. Josie was there taking care of the poor woman. On the other hand, Melanie is seen visiting Dr. Henry who is treating Nikki Gannett who they have removed from the eternal drawer. However, Nikki still couldn't fully come to her senses. It looks like the eternal drawer has a heavy side effect. There was also a Japanese woman named Jinju from the second class carriage. Jinju is a close friend of Bestel and is a scientist at Snowpiercer. Hendry's doctors suspect that Nikki has suffered nerve damage as a result of the side effects of being put to sleep in the eternal drawer, and her nerve damage is potentially permanent. Back to Leighton and Bestel who are currently in the autopsy room together with Janet who is quite an expert in that field. After an autopsy was carried out, now they got information that Seenwise was tortured before being killed. His neck was tied and strangled with a rope while his genitals were cut. Then after that left to die. It wasn't until after Seenwise died that both his hands and feet were cut off. Leighton expressed his opinion that maybe the perpetrator must have had a sharp weapon capable of being able to cut Sinus's organs, because the cut marks were quite neat. Leighton then asked where the beef in the noodles Jack had eaten came from. Bestel immediately invited Leighton to visit the cattle carriage, where there was a cattle ranch. Only the caretaker of the cattle ranch has the best tool for cutting meat. But when Bestel asked permission to enter, the chief butcher would not allow it and would only give permission if an authorized officer came. Having no other choice, Bestel and Leighton went to meet Melanie first. But unexpectedly, a huge avalanche suddenly hit Snowpiercer's carriage, causing everyone in the carriage to feel quite a large shock, especially the carriages that were directly hit by the avalanche. In a matter of seconds, the people and cows that were inside immediately froze to death. Leighton and Bestel were very surprised to see that, and also relieved that they weren't allowed in earlier. A few moments later, it was seen that the train workers were immediately deployed to clean up the damage to the farm carriage. They have a special protective costume that can make them survive the cold outside for a certain period of time. Led by a creepy man named Boyan. There, Leighton and Bestel were of course still carrying out their investigations. They entered the meat cooler and inspected it. At first they didn't find anything odd, but when Bestel tried to open the ventilation, it turned out that it was true that was where Seenwise's feet and hands were maybe the cattle keepers have a bit of cannibalism. Bestel immediately reported this to Roche by telephone. Bestel is sure that the culprit is a livestock dealer. But anyway, the livestock keepers are now dead. However Leighton had another opinion. It might be true that it was the cattle farmers who cut off Seenwise's hands and feet to make food for them, but there's no point in them torturing Seenwise and cutting off his genitals. It means Seenwise was tortured and killed by someone else. Then the cattlemen find Seenwise's body afterward. In the rear carriage, Ruth and her bodyguards returned. This time the lady announced that Mr. Wilford was back recruiting the children in the back carriage. Ruth called their names one by one and Miles was also one of the children called. But Ruth said there was no element of coercion if some of them didn't want to or the family didn't allow it. But it seems that the families whose children were summoned are feeling very grateful. They were happy that their son could go to the front carriage and no longer suffer in the tail carriage. Joshi is seen having a private conversation with Miles, asking if Miles is available. Miles agrees, the boy remembering Leighton's words that they should have connections and informants. Miles is determined to leave so he can help the residents. On the other hand, Leighton is currently back in his cell because the investigation will continue tomorrow. When the room was quiet, Leighton began to act. The man tore off his shirt and made up information about the carriages that were ahead. Then Leighton easily broke into the cell door using paper. In the corridor, Leighton hastily made a drawing of an arrow, then dropped a torn shirt with the layout of the carriage. After that, Leighton immediately hid and soon a group of guards came. They were getting John and the others back in the tail car. John who kept walking looking down could see the arrow made by Leighton. When the momentum was right, Leighton immediately came out of hiding and made a scene with the guards. When that happened, John tried to take the torn shirt but failed, the guards realized it and immediately arrested him, while Leighton was beaten unconscious. The next day, Melanie and Roche went straight to Leighton and scolded him. The 3,000 people on Snowpiercer, they all got their jobs and kept the Snowpiercer train moving safely. The tail carriage just has to sit and stay still without needing to do anything. 
Layden then said that Melanie actually didn't care about the murders in grade 3. For example, what happened two years ago Melanie didn't care even though she caught the wrong person. But why for scene-wise, Melanie care? Because Layden knows that scene-wise is Mr. Wilford's important person who knows many secrets about Mr. Wilford. The reason Melanie cares is because Melanie wants to know what information scene-wise leaked while being tortured by the killer. For perhaps if the information were to get out, the inhabitants of Snowpiercer might cause chaos. So basically Mr. Wilford has a secret that no one should know about. Melanie smiled and was amazed by Layden's ingenuity.